two quick things. It's Jody. Oh, Jody. That's okay. And I'm 66, and they still ask me if there's a if it's a chance of being pregnant. So. Um, it's 1979 and I had just gotten into film school and moved into my first apartment, a rent-stabilized East Village dump. But every apartment in the East Village was a dump in 1979. 79 was also a year full of bad choices and their consequences. Now everybody does stupid things in their 20s and I'm not bragging, but my bad choices and stupid things that year were, well, they were stellar. A single week, summerish 1979, my faux husband, who was homeless until he moved in with me, tried to kill me with a Bible. I got fired from my titty bar job, and a pimp I thought was a friend locked me in a motel in New Jersey. When I finally found my way home, my apartment was boarded up, the hallways stained with soot, and the building reeked from fire. I'm only four days into this week. We still have three to go. After prying the boards off the door, I stick my arm and my now bloodied fingers through the hole and let myself in. The floor is a shiny, clicking, black and brown, writhing mess of cockroaches. Now the only thing I'm afraid of, outside of intimacy, <laughs> is bugs. Pull a gun on me, I think I still have a chance. Throw a worm on me, game over, you win. My drug-addled and boozy brain was simply done with reality. This was obviously a hallucination, a waking nightmare, because this level of infestation was simply not possible. I drop my bag on the floor, crunch my way across the apartment, and climb into my loft bed, dropping clothes along the way. Because fuck all, man, I am tired, I need a break, I sleep like the dead. Hours later, flicking away what I assume is the cat, I run through the last few days in my mind. I'd fought for my life, I'd lost a job, and thrown myself through a plate glass window. But what if it was all a dream, a bad dream? I mean, who has a week like that in real life? Then something else tickled my cheek and my arm, and shit, what if it wasn't a dream? They are everywhere. The apartment next to me had gone up in flames, and the roaches, seeking safe haven, moved in without asking or paying rent, much like the faux husband, but I didn't know that then. What I did know, I'm half naked and there are roaches everywhere, everywhere. I grab my trench coat, my bag, and I run, probably screaming. I don't think I stopped for shoes. My heart slows in the cab ride across town to Chelsea. We pull up, I open my bag to pay, Remember the bag that I dropped on the floor? <laughs> Hundreds of roaches had made camp while I slept. I scream, the cabbie is screaming, one of us is crying. <laughs> I toss him a handful of bills, I jump out and I'm pitching pebbles at my friend Lola's window. Like some disheveled street urchin, and I know I was too old to be an urchin, but I, I like the romance of a Dickensian image. <laughs> I stand on her street, probably barefoot, definitely crying, makeup streaked and melting, my bag a few feet away from me on the sidewalk, and I motion to her to come out. She looks at me like I'm the village idiot, and then comes out in pajamas, followed by Chester the dog. Now there are no words that could explain why I was there, why I couldn't come inside, and how my life had come to this point. So I dump my bag on the sidewalk. Clothes, money, hair things, food scraps hit the pavement along with several hundred cockroaches that scatter in every direction. Lola and I hold each other, screaming and jumping in some insane double dutch, while Chester, the dog, pounces on the roaches, licking them up with his long pink dog tongue <laughs> and swallowing. We scream and cry and pee ourselves a little and laugh until all the roaches have left or been eaten, then we collapse on the stoop. I will spend days on her couch, she'll stroke my head each time she passes, and Chester will lick my face with the same long pink dog tongue he'd use to scoop up all the roaches. Thank you.